All right. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, this is a regularly scheduled meeting of the uh, board of the town of Sunderland. It's October 4th, 2000, 2021. Time is uh, 6.32. Wow, 6.38. Dave, your, uh, your uh, precision timepiece is off by a few minutes up there. Uh -huh. Um, so I'd like to open the meeting. The first order of business is the approval of the minutes of September 27th. I have a motion we approve the minutes of the 27th. Second. We have a motion made and seconded on the minutes of the 27th. Uh, any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Three zero. Very unanimous. Next up is a one day liquor licenses for Mike's Maze on October 15th, 22nd, and the 29th. Jeff, what do you have to fill us in about those? Uh, I think Mr. Wissman is on. Yep. Um, yeah. And I think it's yeah. the, the beer maze, right? The same thing that was you were here for last week, except three different dates. Three new dates, yeah. Um, so this is just for the remaining three events we're having. Um, same format as the first ones. Um, the they are on the yeah the fifteenth, the twenty second, and the 29th. Okay, so uh, thank you, uh, David. Uh, we have uh, talked to. We filled all the paperwork out and talked to. No, no concerns. No concerns. David Crystal. No yeah, concerns. I have any questions. Yep. Without hearing any concern, this is a continuation of what we started last week. Uh, I'll entertain a motion for Mike's made one day liquor licenses for those three days. Uh, motion to grant. I uh, second. All right, a motion made. So we have rain dates are the next day? Yes, yeah. So we have a motion made and seconded to uh, one day liquor licenses on 10 15th, the 22nd, and the 29th. Um, and if those are rain dates to be held, it would be the following day of the 16th, the 23rd, or the 30th. So we have a motion made and seconded. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Uh, very unanimous. Okay. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, David. Good luck. Thank you. I imagine it. Good one. Yeah, the first one was was very successful. People had a very good time, so we're we're excited to keep it going. Yeah, I I think it's great, David. Uh, great idea. Good job. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Next up, uh, fire department update, Chief. Hi, everybody. Good evening. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. We're going to need a wider angle lens for that beard, though, I think, you know, to get it all in there. I know. Well, I tried to, uh, tried to turn it a little bit. Sometimes that helps. Move the phone a little farther back. <laughs> but uh, appreciate, bear with me. Thank you. I appreciate everybody giving me a few minutes here. Um, it's, a, it's a good week to have me on. It's Fire Safety Week in the, uh, in the Commonwealth and everywhere. And the, um, uh, the theme for Fire Safety Week this year is know the sounds of fire safety. And it really revolves around those devices in your house, which are smoke and seal detectors. And there are a lot of different manufacturers of those detectors. The first thing that you want to do is one, make sure that the batteries still work. Uh, it's amazing how many homes we go into for various things that don't necessarily have to be uh, alarm calls, but through the course of uh, talking with homeowners or residents, ask them how their fire uh, smoke detectors are working and CO detectors. And um, it's amazing how many times folks don't remember the last time they've checked the, um, the batteries. Uh, they haven't, uh, haven't tested them recently. And you engage folks and you really start to talk about that. And, uh, we find that sometimes people have smoke detectors that don't work at all, and uh, they don't make any noise. There are no sounds of fire safety in that case. So um, that's the first step to make sure that everything is, uh, is operating properly. And then if it is, uh, you want to be able to identify 
what it sounds like when it goes out. And testing those devices is a great way to do that because it'll let you know what the test needs to sound like in some cases, and it always lets you know what it sounds like when it's an alarm. And um, whether you're not too familiar with the devices in your house or they're new, uh, it's always a great idea to test those uh, monthly at the least so you're familiar with what they sound like. When they don't seem to be uh, operating properly, it's a good time to uh, really replace them. They're not really a device that can be maintained other than keeping them free of dust and uh, vacuuming them from time to time. There really isn't anything that you can do to fix them. Uh, once, they're, once they're shot, they're shot. Smoke detectors are good for about 10 years. Carbon monoxide detectors can be good for anywhere from five to 10 years. And it really depends on the uh, manufacturer and what they stipulate for the, uh, for the days. And um, also wanna make sure that you've got those in the right place. And I can um, forward over to um, your assistant, a document from the state that's intended to help people when they're selling their home, locate the devices in the right place so they can comply with all the appropriate laws. But it really does a nice job of illustrating the places to put the smoke and CO detectors. Inside of bedrooms, perhaps, uh, but definitely outside of bedrooms, the bottom of stairways, what have you. So I'll get that out and uh, we can either link it to the website or uh, it's on the fire department website, but it's in the inspections portion. So we can kind of bring that front and center so people can have that as a resource. Um, I can't really say that we've had a lot of uh, real big events other than the structure fire we had a few weeks back. Um, we're very fortunate with that. The, um, the residents got out safely. There were some injuries, but they weren't, uh, they weren't horribly serious. And I understand everybody's recovering, but um, that was a great example of our mutual aid system. And we had lots of help that was uh, on scene quicker. We got the fire knocked down, and we were able to uh, preserve the house enough so both the state fire marshal's office, the state police, and the uh, residence insurance company could get in and really narrow down uh, what may have started that fire. And um, that was also important so those folks could have um, a good closure with their insurance company and get things back to uh, as close to back to normal as possible and get on with rebuilding their home, which is good. Um, and I know I jumped into the, the discussion about the fire quickly, but were there any questions uh, from you guys about the smoke detectors, the CO detectors, what I started with? Steve, if somebody really has a, is very confused, can they, uh, give the firehouse a call? They can, they can, and we're happy to talk you through it. We, we try not to um, advertise widely that we'll you know, go to your home and, and help with putting up the devices because we did that for a while and you really were inundated. Uh, but absolutely, if, if somebody's got a question, if somebody's concerned, the, uh, there's two ways that they can get a hold of us. The business line for the fire department is 665-2465 and if nobody picks up because uh, we're, we're not always there uh, could certainly leave a message and we'll get back to you or um, could email us at inspections at sunderlandfire.com and that will go to the, um, uh, the email address that's, that is monitored by us for um, inspections somebody saw in the home or what have you and that, um, that's another thing. And I'm going to go off of the earbuds now because I've got to plug my phone in or else I'll lose. Um, and typically, we don't have um, a lot of people that get in touch with us on that. Sorry about that. Um, about that um, sort of business on the inspections email address, but we're more than happy to work through confusion or concerns that somebody might have. 
Yeah, I, I think just being able to, sometimes people just want to be reassured sometimes, Steve, you know? And, uh, and like you said, you can do most of it can be done over the telephone. Absolutely, it is. Um, it is absolutely something that we can talk through. And worst comes to worst, if we solve it that way, we're more than happy to uh, more than happy to schedule with us. Excellent, excellent. Anything else, CV? One quick thing: um, we do have an event happening at the uh, elementary school property on Friday. And we've been working through this with the uh, police department, who's really spearheaded it. But it's a uh, public safety, it's got a fancy name, but it's really a public safety festival. There will be an awful lot of uh, public safety agencies there from fire, police, uh, Department of Conservation and Recreation. Uh, there'll be a few helicopters there. And it's going to run from 3.30 in the afternoon till probably about 8 o'clock at night. And there'll be several evolutions, demonstrations, um, and it's open to everybody, free of charge, and uh, we'd love to see everybody there. Can we get rides in a helicopter? Mm -hmm. uh, probably, but you probably have to do something wrong or get one. <laughs> yeah, not the kind of ride you want. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Hi, I just I just know one time I was crew changing on helicopter out in the uh, Gulf of Mexico. And we had a relief captain who was actually a captain in the Coast Guard, retired. And just before he got on the helicopter, he gave me his business card and said, Tom, if this helicopter crashed, you were to tell my wife, call my wife and tell her to sue mobile for every penny that they have. <laughs> and I go, oh, that makes me feel a lot better, Cap. Thanks. <laughs> so. Very reassuring. I have, it was very reassuring. Yeah, because when, when you get off one of the uh, when the ships, you have to go a long ways over Louisiana before you get on firm ground. Most of it's swamp. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Thank you, Stevie. So, so it. That I think uh, police chief was here the other day, and he said touch a truck or something like that. They called it right. Touch a truck or. I think yeah, he was calling it. They'll, they'll be. You'll, you'll be able to engage with just about everything. I was astounded. Um, the police department, as I said, really spearheaded it. Apparently it started as a smaller event uh, for kids to have ice cream with police officers. And as more and more agencies found out about it, it really exploded into, um, into what it is now. So uh, it's safe to say whatever your interest is in public safety, if no matter what age you are, you're going to find something to uh, satisfy that curiosity on Friday. There's going to be a lot of stuff there, and uh, uh, it's going to be exciting. Thank you, Stevie. Uh, Dave, having... you and Crystal have any questions? No, yep. I'm good. No, I'm Thank you very much, Steve. Thanks. Thank you. Take care. Be well, everybody. Bye. Okay. Next up is we have Board of Health, Caitlin. We had uh, gotten used to not talking to you, but I guess we're talking to the Board of Health again. What you got for us, Caitlin? Hi, how are you? Good. I don't look like my picture anymore. Go figure. Um, <laughs> sorry, it's a good thing. <laughs> so, um, so uh, active COVID cases, we have one case within the last 10 days. And because if you remember, that's how we do the active cases. Yep. Um, and actually it's 12 days. So, um, and the positive test date on that was September 30th. Before that, um, we had one case on September 22nd and three cases on uh, September 20th. So that would be four cases, and three of those four cases were the University of Massachusetts, and the remaining case was a toddler who was exposed at daycare. So what I'm kind of setting up for here is what I did was, if you recall, on um, September 15th, we called for an emergency meeting in uh, the Board of Health because I was, I think, 
um, the, the entire board was concerned. I was tracking the cases in uh, Maiden, the Maiden system, and from September 1st to September 15th, 14 days, we had 23 cases, uh, which is huge for our town. And uh, so we called the emergency uh, meeting and discussed the mask mandate for the town. And that went into effect two days later on Friday, the 17th. And since then, the case has steadily gone down to now we have one case. Um, now I know everyone's eager, the very first question that was asked to me by our town administrator, and I understand the question, was, so, when are we going to change? Um, and I just think that having this, uh, it, just two weeks, um, is not, you know, we're monitoring, um, but I think that when you see results like this, I think that's great and it's wonderful. I don't think that means everybody rip off their masks and let, you know, let's get back to where we were. So I'd like to see it plateau for a while. We got to where we are and then see where the numbers go. Um, I am more than happy, and I know that the other two Board of Health uh, members do have input. Um, we have invited people who have called in, um, angry and happy, <laughs> to come to meetings. You know, no one's come. Um, they can call in, they can zoom in, they can do any, a lot of things. Um, but we don't get a lot of input from the town. Uh, but I'm willing and happy to have as much input as possible. You guys have any questions or anything? No, I was just I was just looking at the uh, the Franklin County uh, dashboard, and they haven't they okay. haven't they haven't updated since the the thirtieth. So, um. yeah, and and those numbers don't update. They won't because uh, that would be Thursday. So no, they're not going to update till this Thursday. Okay, that's that's right. That's what I kind of thought because. I, I, I was I was just going down through the uh, the different towns. They still showed us with like 13, 13 cases. Well, because they do what see, and I've never. I think we discussed this probably back during the the first wave. I I think that the way they do their numbers is almost, and you know. I don't mince my words, disingenuous. They take a two week period, almost two weeks ago. And by then, when you're dealing with a disease that has an incubation period of only a few days, and then you've got the quarantine and then people are back on the street well within 10 days those numbers are garbage so i just i don't i understand and i and i, and I spoke with people at dph and i've spoken with you know asking them why they use those numbers and they wait for those numbers because they are the most accurate numbers, but they're outdated accurate numbers, if that makes any sense. Our numbers, because we're dealing on such a local level, are completely accurate for Sunderland. They can't do that when they're compiling multiple towns data. We can get a snapshot 
snapshot of right here, right now. And of a, something that's 10 days and be accurate. But I'm also on Maven constantly. They can't be on every town Maven date. There's too many, too much numbers, too many moving pieces. And I do understand that, but to use that as metrics to determine what's going on in our locality, I think is, is not accurate. But I think it gives a good flavor and it definitely gives trending and gives trends. So I wouldn't be surprised to see the trend going down. Yeah, I, and, and again, I just think, I, I, I just think it's interesting when people, when people, you know, talk the data, we all have to be using the same, the same numbers. So we're all talking the same, the same language. So, and, and, and so we can expect that you'll be on next week also, and we can look at the data again. We can look at we can look at the countywide data next week. Yes. Good. Um. You know, I can I can definitely do that with you guys. Um. You know, we won't be on Monday, right? You know, we Monday, Tuesday. Are we meeting uh, Tuesday, Tuesday next Tuesday, or are we having week next week off? That doesn't matter to me. If we get if we need stuff, we can do it. You know. Is there anything we need to meet for next week? Um. There was something on the agenda, and I'm blanking right now. I can look. All right. So right now, Caitlin, we, we may or may not be meeting on Tuesday. So we would definitely need you the following the following Monday. How's that? That'll give us a little more time, yeah. too, to see how the numbers stabilize or whatever. I have a board of health on the 25th, I think. But I can, I'll be in the building. Thank you. Well, this is the week yep. before the 25th. Yeah. I mean, Crystal's right. It'd be the no week. Problem. It'd be the yeah, week be before. 18th. Right. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, I'll be available to you guys anytime. Thank so, you, is it Caitlin. fair to say, Caitlin, that we're not going to have a change in the mask policy within the next couple of weeks? I know you said you want to give it some time, but give it some time is very general. It's not, you know. No, you're. Yeah, you're right. Um. We can call the, I'll call the Board of Health members and uh, find out what they, what they would, you know, feel comfortable doing. Um, at, at this point, it, it's been, it has been, it'll be two full weeks. Um, and, you know, with an airborne disease, I, I think we need to be careful. No, that's, that's not a problem. It's just. You know, just using the term, we're going to give it some time. You know, if you tell us we're going to revisit again in two weeks, at least it's something to pass on to other people versus give it some time is just so general. It, Too open -ended in that sense. it could become confrontational. You know, when town people are asking you, you know, asking us, like, what's the update on it? And we say, oh, we're going to give it some time. Yeah, so if we could say we're going to revisit it in two weeks or something like that, it's it's a, an answer versus a generalization. Well, it's definitely, going to be, it's definitely going to be revisited and discussed on the 25th. Okay. So there won't be a change prior to the 25th? No. Okay, thank you. Yep. Thank you, Caitlin. Thank you, guys. Okay. Alrighty. There's our board of health update. Um, before we do, is the do you want to do public comment? Sure. We can do that first. Lucy, did you want to talk to us? Uh, I didn't think I could just. Uh, I. Off. I don't know where it's thought. Uh, absolutely, you're under public comment, Lucy. You can absolutely talk to us. I'm not really prepared, but I just wanted to see what was going on tonight. Okay. So I might come and talk to you 
in a week or two. All right, that's fine. I just wanted, I, I didn't want to, I, I just didn't want to lose you, okay? All right, thank you. Thank you, Jeff, for passing that on. All righty. Open space. You want to talk to us? <laughs> Thanks for showing up. Are you in the final draft now? Yes. Yes, so I've got um, a couple of maps. Um, uh, this is the action plan map, oh, which thank you. highlights the goals of the final plan and the objective items, which is a whole other list of um, action items in the action plan itself. And then this is the open space map, um, which provides information um, based on the 2020 assessment of the law. I don't know, I have another five and everything. Um, so that, the open space map um, shows parcels in um, Sunderland that are under some level of protection from development, whether it's permanent protection or um, temporary, which would be the chapter 61 okay. program. Limited is considered town owned land that's not, um, you know, restricted in any way that could potentially um, change use with a, a town meeting vote. Um, so, anyways, those are the two, like, kind of key maps um, that help give you some overview. And then I did put out a full hard copy version, um, but this is obviously a distributed. Yeah, you get the PDFs. PDF. Yeah. Um, so, do you want? Do you want to start? <laughs> okay. Um, so yeah, we did prepare a little presentation. So some of these slides you may uh, recognize from the um, public forum that was held back on August second, um, and so they give kind of an overview of the update process. Um, <laughs> we good? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so yeah, um, so just to give a brief overview of the update process, um, so the, the committee um, that worked on this really formed back in um, 2020 um, to start the update. So OSRPs, the Open Space and Recreation Plans, are seven-year plans. Um, they are state-approved. Um, they have to be reviewed by the Division of Conservation Services. Um, and so the 2014 Sunderland plan was due for an update. So that began in 2020. You can see the representation on the committee, um, a good uh, representation for this kind of planning process. Um, and so the committee did a public survey back in 2020 to gather feedback and got almost 500 responses. Um, and so you'll see the results of that survey um, a little bit later. And then um, through some luck, the, the MVP process, which some of you may remember from 2019-2020, um, um, that grant to the Executive Office of Energy and Environmental Affairs, um, the town had some money left over and they allowed the town to repurpose that funding to have FERCOG um, assist with some of the sections of the open space plan. So that's where I came in <laughs> to help out. Um, but the committee had already done a lot um, just on their own. Um, and one of the um, things that we needed to do with that funding, which was a good thing to do anyways, was to incorporate the MVP, the Municipal Vulnerability Preparedness, kind of um, findings and information on climate change into the open space and recreation plan. So that was one of the things we worked on. Can everybody hear you over Zoom? Like, do you need a mic or, or is that There's one right above. Yeah. Well, uh, the, the uh, phone is how Zoom here. people hear. Yeah. Oh, great. Just check. Yep. Um, do you want to do this phone? Or like, publish this? Sure. Um, you want to do this? Sure. So, uh, our last update was in 2014. And I have to say that um, as chair of this committee, this wasn't a way. The happiest part of writing this update <laughs> was just being able to list all the things that the town had accomplished since the last um, 
update had been finalized, and it's really qu it's quite a proud list. So um, Sunderland Riverside Park was created and opened in 2019. The uh, Sunderland. Um, Nancy, I. Actually, you said something that sometimes we skip over. Sometimes we never take an opportunity to go back and see what we, we have accomplished. So I appreciate the fact that you bring, you, you have this because we're, we're always going to the next. We never have an opportunity to, in, to really reflect on the things that have gone exceptionally well. So. Yes, and there's so much. <laughs> It, 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 right, hard work. and and but you you know when when you think about it, I mean, the, there there's things like just like you know let's just say the boat ramp. Well, everybody say, well, we've always had the boat ramp. Um, well, well boat ramp. We, we have, <laughs> we have, we have had a boat ramp, um, but but now I mean it's like it's like the Taj Mahal of boat ramps, um, especially for for launching kayaks and canoes and and you know, prams and John boats and small boats, and, and it is exceptional. Yes. And, and I, I, I appreciate the opportunity to review because there are a lot of amazing things that has happened over the last yes. period of time. Sorry to interrupt. No, I mean, I think it's just, that's all part of the acknowledgement process. So yes, the Sunderland boat ramp was the ankle breaker, um, and it took a lot of complicated negotiations. Um, to get it paved and improved. And now, like you said, it's the Taj Mahal of boat ramps, and it's really become a destination, especially for people who kayak, canoe, or use small boats yeah. for fishing. Um, Sunderland Water District protected 40 key acres at the base of Mount Toby on Cross Mountain Road. That was just last year. We had that unbelievable tricentennial celebration, which was uh, part of the recreation part of Open Space 2018. Uh, we have preserved another 200 acres of farmland, um, bringing the total up to something like 1,300 acres, which is quite significant, really pretty amazing. Um, that was regular APR, right? Yes, that's yeah. APR. So that's yeah. all your red spots on your map? Yes, and Kirk Griffin, who is the, the recently retired chair of the Conservation Commission, deserves a lot of credit for yep. making that happen. Um, North Main Street, sidewalk and bike improvements, those are ongoing, complete streets, lots of new sidewalks and pedestrian and bike improvements, Merrick Field, built at Sunderland Elementary School, an all-volunteer, really amazing project. Um, and as um, Alyssa mentioned, the Municipal Vulnerability Preparedness um, designation, which involved a lot of work from lots of people in town, and that was just last year. So that brings us up to date, and if we manage to accomplish that much in the next seven years, it will be pretty remarkable. <laughs> but um, yeah, a great, a really a great track record since the last open space plan was um, was approved. And really, the purpose of the open space plan is to make Sunderland eligible for state grants. Without one, you are dead in the water. Yeah, and the, the park grant, which is through the Division of Conservation Services, is one of the key grants for the Riverside Park, is that right? Yes, that's yeah. right. Um, and that, that requires an up-to-date plan. Um, the Water then, District Protection also requires. Yep. Oh, many of these yep. require that open space plan. So. Yep. Um, so we can, yeah, move on. So just um, a few kind of key findings um, from this planning process. Um, so this pie chart kind of um, summarizes what you see on your map in front of you in terms of the different levels of um, protection across the town. Um, as um, Missy mentioned, um, about 1,300 1, acres of farmland is permanently protected through the APR program. Um, and, and that's huge. You have really important um, fine farmland soils in Sutherland. They're globally important, and so it's great that both the town, the farmers, and the state have you know worked um, to protect a lot of that land. Um, you have about 2,700 acres of forest that are permanently protected. Most of that is publicly owned, um, so you know like Mount Toby State Forest, um, um, those types of areas. It's not a whole lot of privately owned, uh, permanently protected forest land. 
about 75% of Sunderland um, is considered important biodiversity habitat under the Biomap 2 um, program, that's through the Natural Heritage and Endangered Species Program. That's not a regulatory designation, it's a planning designation that's just trying to help towns identify areas um, that are important to try to um, preserve for both local but also state and beyond biodiversity. Um, and so Sunderland actually has a, a lot, and it is kind of in the um, kind of Mount Toby area. It's, it's largely in the forested areas as well as along some of your waterways um, are all very important habitat. Um, and kind of one of the themes of this update was to start to focus a little more on the Mount Toby area um, because there are kind of large gaps in um, protection along Mount Toby and it is an important area both in terms of um, habitat as well as um, your drinking water source, um, aquifer protection. Um, so those were some of the key themes. You can move on. And so as I mentioned before, um, we incorporated um, some of the findings from the Municipal Vulnerability Preparedness um, process into this um, report, especially um, climate change data that would impact um, your natural resources, open spaces. Um, it, it's kind of one of those um, situations where your, your open space resources really help mitigating climate change and help um, reduce some of the impacts that you may um, start to see from climate change, but they're also threatened at the same time. So just considering um, some of those threats. Um, this is just showing increase in heavy precipitation um, is the graph on the left, the map. That's actually just observed, it's not projected. Um, we know we're seeing you know, heavier rainfall in a shorter period of time, which can lead to flooding, erosion, um, a lot of different issues. Um, and then the chart on the right is just showing um, observed and projected temperature changes under different emission scenarios. And so the plan goes into more information about how some of these climate change, um, um, how climate change is, is currently and potentially going to impact um, some of your natural resources and your open space resources. And you'll, you'll be probably familiar with this one. This was from your MVP process. So again, just um, this is just giving local examples of some of what we're talking about. And you can see how a lot of these hazards um, impact uh, natural resources, whether it's farmland or forests. Um, so just um, reiterating, reiterating that. <laughs> So this is the, um, these are the results of the, the survey that the committee um, uh, put forward back in 2020, and it's just asking um, for priorities on certain um, key um, kind of objectives for the town. And the top, kind of the highest priority was protecting forested land, especially Mount Toby. Um, and then it kind of goes down from there, but um, making Sunderland more resilient to climate change also got a lot of high priority ranking, adding more trails for walking, um, hiking, wheelchairs, um, and then townwide events as well as youth sports all were, you know, had high or somewhat important priority rankings, just not quite as high as the others, um, but everyone felt but they all <laughs> had some, some level of priority for the most part. And then there were lots of other comments as well. And then after the, um, the public forum that was held back in August, we asked folks who um, attended that night to help with prioritizing some of the objectives um, that were in the plan at the time. And so these are the goals, which again are on your action plan map that you have. And then these objectives that are listed are kind of the higher priority objectives that were um, chosen um, from the forum participants. Um, the farmland one comes up in two different categories, but um, so these kind of rose to the top for folks who attended the forum. Um, so the next steps for the plan is that we hope to get um, 
obviously support from the select board. Um, you have support from the Conservation Commission and the Planning Board. Um, for COG, we, we are working on our letter of support. <laughs> um, but yeah, so the plan is to um, submit the, the plan to the state for review. Um, they normally turn it around within a few months, um, often with some you know, comments and, and suggested revisions, normally nothing too crazy. Um, and then hopefully aiming for the final plan to be approved hopefully by January so that you have a nice 2022 date to go another seven years. Um, and so that would um, make you eligible for different grants and you can move forward with all your great work. So that's that. <laughs> Seven years goes by pretty quick, doesn't yeah. it? It really does. does. It seems like we were just doing the last one. I right. know. Um, oh. yeah. um, Blink, it'll be time to do the next one. I'm not doing it. <laughs> 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 I like those ones that I do want to give my. Um, I heartfelt thanks to the members of the committee Megan Arklin, Doug Fulton, Teresa Jones, and Jennifer Uncles. Everybody was just totally delightful to work with and energetic and full of ideas and it, it really was it really was a pleasure. And Alyssa Larose did an absolutely amazing job and um, I really felt very fortunate that this whole process went very smoothly and, and it was actually fun. <laughs> so yes, thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. I've always I've I've had conversations with with people from all over. I always thought that Sunderland's very lucky that we have we have a, a an abundance of people that have very special talents that are willing to to uh, volunteer their time and efforts. And you know, and going back, you know, Kurt Griffin. I mean, how how do you get luck into having someone for thirty five years with the the breadth of knowledge that 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 man has and but he's not alone. I mean, you know, I I just go through and look at, you know, Steve Prohl on the on the zoning board and, you know, Dana on the planning board. I mean, we, we're very fortunate to have people like that. And the, the secret to getting a lot of the grants that we have been able to get the last few years is that we do have those people that, because without having an open space plan in place, you can't apply for certain grants. And by accomplishing that, you guys have really put us in a, a very enviable position to be able to apply and finish projects and start new projects. So thank you very much. Yes, and, and I mentioned Sarah Snyder too, because her first couple, I mean really thousands of hours of work on the Riverside Park. Really, that project could not have been better. Somebody who brings a very high level of expertise um, to the project. Sorry, we lost audio. I think they cut it at certain intervals. Welcome to like, Zoom. Yeah. Enter your meeting ID followed by pound. And then it gets shorter. It? It yeah. Um. The price of free. You know. <laughs> Enter your participant ID followed by pound. Other you are in the meeting now. There are seven participants in the meeting. This meeting is being recorded. We have to use it as a motivator. <laughs> <laughs> Can you hear us? Anybody in the audience? Anyone? Bueller? Bueller? There Thanks, we go. Jennifer. I got it. All right. Thumbs up. Okay. Thank you, Jennifer. So that's it? I, I mean. That's it, unless you have questions. I mean, it's really just a vehicle for, yeah. you know, your next brilliant idea. Now, just just so let people know, your final report is 165 pages long. That's right. 
So, so everybody in the audience, just to know, they did give the abridged format because if you're lucky enough, you really should read the 165 pages because there's some great information, especially the history, the history part, the historical part. Um, and, and then when you look at some of the mapping, it, most people would think that Mount Toby is all protected, but yeah, when you look nice. at the maps, it, it's not. And, and I remember a long time ago, um, uh, and I believe it was Terry Blunt, when, when he had come talking about, who pre was before Rich Hubbard, um, but they talked about corridors and yes. animal corridors. Migratory corridors, yeah. And, and it was, it's pretty amazing because if and when you put your kayak on the river and paddle north, and if you go by the Reuben Drake named islands, the first island, the second island, <laughs> and you get to the third island, um, in, in that area you, you actually will see deer swimming across, um, bald eagles um, on the third island. I've been on the third island, and it's almost every time I'm there, I find bear, bear tracks, turkey, and turkey, and, and it's an island. So the bear are swimming to get to that island. Um, and you see mink and otter and all kinds of neat stuff out there. And, and they're right, when they were talking about the corridor, there, is, there are animal corridors that most of us don't see, but... Happens every, it's their commuting routes, essentially. It's yeah. very important. So I, I just think, I just think we, we, we do have uh, many resources who are lucky recreational resources so thank you very much david or crystal comment mm -hmm. okay. thanks for uh, all the work Jeffrey? I, know, I know how much work goes into that so appreciate it I, I just wanted to add one thing i know Alyssa mentioned the mvp grip i think the FERCOG also gave the town a district local technical assistance grant so i just wanted to thank the FERCOG for yep. that yeah. as well yes. Um, yes, we've been and using i'm that yeah, I may have missed that part of it, but <laughs> didn't want it to go unnoticed. Yes, give props to the HTV for that, too. <laughs> um, following up on two things that you said, um, one is that at our last committee meeting, we had the Public Safety Commission and the Public Health 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 you know, high school students might be able to use this for reports or projects. Um, you know, it, it shouldn't just sit there as a sort of, you know, a document that one person at the state reads. Like, it is a great resource for people who are um, interested in the history and the future of the town, and we hope that people will take full advantage of everything that's in it, and that it'll be prominently posted on the town website. Well, that's <laughs> that's that's so that. I think through the Conservation Commission, and also maybe the, the Recreation Committee, and if there are other places where it could be um, made accessible. I don't know if the library could have a couple copies, hard copies maybe yep. even, um, that people you know, could flip through because it's, you know, it's such a rich resource that I think it shouldn't just be right. enjoyed. You get it posted on the site and the search engines will pick it up and everything. So. Yeah, that would be ideal. That would be great. Yeah. And um, also just do want to emphasize again the conservation. Part of our, it is part of our, quote unquote, our master plan. That's one, you know, the, that, the housing are, are very defined portions of our master plan. Um, but we, we should make it available. It should, so I don't know, do we put it up on our web, our web page so people could look at it? Yep, we have the draft version up. We'll put this one up as well. And, and, and maybe, we sh maybe we should look at, Jeff, about getting it printed and you know maybe print 10 copies and and distribute you know a few copies over to the library and out here um i you know i'm sure it wouldn't be that that expensive to do so i i agree it it's sometimes sometimes we lose this great stuff and, it, and this is i'm and again it is great stuff when if you just go through it so good Good points. Thank you, Nancy. Good points. 
Okay. Thank you very much. Thanks. Have a good night. All right. Um, any uh, additional public comment? I don't see anybody clicking off off mute. Okay. Um, select board updates. David Crystal. Uh, we had our building committee meeting last week for Frontiers. We had a little tour of the some of the hot uh, items there. We got to see the fabulous new track, which is looking really good. I wish I was running track again. That's a that's a really nice track. Um, got to look at some other things that are on their priority list. I think our next meeting is scheduled for, I want to say, the 14th of October, I think. So we we'll moving along with that. So, Crystal? Nothing this week. Um, I think uh, Senior Center, um, I met with a couple um, asbestos and mold people and we viewed the uh, present senior center, so I was able to make a, uh, a report to the Deerfield Selectman what I saw uh, on and what these people that I that I met over there. So we were able to give the, the town administrator um, a basic summation of what, what we saw. Um, right now we're the town of Deerfield is, which is housing our senior center um, is having there's a concern about being able to get into it and how we, and and we're gonna try we're gonna have a meeting Wednesday right Wednesday, four o'clock yep. so so we gotta we're trying to work on a place um, we have still have the tent outside um, but I don't think it's going to be able to stay much longer before water. people start getting a little cold, chilly. Um, we They are holding some programs now over in Fellowship Hall, some exercise. Right, Crystal? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I believe Wednesday. Yeah. yeah. So we're going to we're gonna try to talk at the town to see to see where they're, town of Deerfield, see where they're going to go. South County EMS, um, it's still, our volume numbers are back up. The, the initial part of COVID, people were not utilizing ambulances as much. Um, they were st trying to stay away from hospitals, so we did see a downtick in the calls, but the calls have re have pretty much are, are back to normal now. Um, Zach is um, looking at the numbers, and, and um, so we're trying to see if we have to rearrange how um, how it's staffed to, 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 to come. And, and we're kind, kind of coming to that point. We're five, six, seven years into it now. So now we're getting better data so we can, we can talk, uh, when we talk, we're basing it conversations on, on data. It's data driven and, instead of ex, you know, educated guessing. So that, that's, that's good. But budget, we're staying, budget, we're talk we're, we're spending a lot of time talking about how um, billing is how we bill because most people I think realize that when you get a bill, your the insurance companies um, don't necessarily pay the whole bill. So if there's a two thousand dollar bill, there's certain insurance companies that'll pay half fifty percent, and that'll say that's all you get. Some companies will say, "Yep, yeah, we'll give you two thousand dollars," and then you have Medicare, Medicaid, that'll say they'll pay you 30%. So we're trying to we're trying to establish a policy that fits for our residents, um, and 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 so they're not. We we don't want collection agency harassing our residents. That's not why we why we have it. So we're trying to come up with a better plan with that. So that South County. All right, so I think any other updates from the no, board? No, no. Um, Jeff's going to fill us in about North so North Main Street. Yeah, I know <laughs> people are going to be really sad that this is supposed to be the last week of construction. So if they're planning on doing the final paving, um, 
obviously we got a lot of rain last night into today. Um, so the highway superintendent was out there showing them where water was accumulating and making sure when they do the surface paving that that's taken care of. Um, they're supposed to mill uh, around School Street and then repave sort of that patched area where they connected the storm drain replacement. Um, but the, uh, as of late last week, they're still predicting being done um, by the end of this week. So, That's so the road work, right? There, there yeah. was a, there was a concern about how they dug up the gardens on the north northwest side. Yep. So, how did, have we addressed that with them yet? We have expressed our disappointment that they didn't communicate to us that this was when this was happening and we were given an opportunity to um, prepare the gardens better um, and and unfortunately it, it's sort of par for the course. I mean I said, Look, the, this contractor and you pass these gardens every day going to North Main Street. Um, you didn't realize that this was an important part of piece of the town. I mean, it's called out in the plans as planters, you know, and the, so, you know, they said, we'll, we'll see if there's something that we can do. But oh, there I, is. Um, there is. Because I would... I would hope we talk to Lucy, and and find out how much was ruined, and okay. we, and we build them accordingly. Um, and I I think I think there's, you know, they're they're supposed to restore the site to, they're, they're not. Anyway, they're supposed to restore the site. Yep. And and I I think and if we have to, we can, we can, we can hold it to them. But yep. I, I, but I, you know, I, I just, if if they were, if this was the Civil War, they would be known as the General Shermans, slash and burn. Yep. And, and and I just don't understand how, how that happens. But it it is frustrating. It, it's it's amazingly frustrating. Yep. And just like you're coming through coming through the center of town this morning at. At six o'clock, there was uh, two feet of water because because of the silt bags. Yep. So in the road. So okay. So we're we'll get back to we're going to follow through on that. Yes. Okay. Absolutely. Thank you, Jeff. Um, and then the only other update I have is that the energy committee has been working on. Um, the next green communities projects um, unfortunately so the the deadline for those applications is Friday and unfortunately as of 5:30, 5:45 this evening we hadn't gotten the proposals from the energy consultants mm -hmm. um, and therefore you know I said I you know <laughs> If I, if I can't read it before the select board meeting, I'm not comfortable presenting it to them. They haven't seen yeah. it. So um, I think that we're going to wait until the spring and then fully flesh out some of the ideas um, and hopefully have a, a more successful and less rushed application process in the spring. Okay. Um, but they have been working on that, and they visited all the buildings and did energy assessments and um, public safety, library, and this building as well. Uh, and I think they went to the school too. Okay. Good. Okay. Anything else? That's it. Okay. David, Crystal? Uh, nothing else. Nothing on my end. Anybody? Peter? Nobody coming on? Okay. Um, no, not seeing anybody entertain a motion? I motion we adjourn. Oh, I guess I'll second. Okay, we have a motion made and seconded to adjourn. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Uh, Jeff, declare it unanimous to clear us out at uh, 733, please. <laughs>